Blog Talk Radio. Welcome to Micromana with Reverend Esty of New Birth Ministries. God bless you. Sit back, grab your tablets, your pencils, and your writing utensils to see what God has to say to you today. Well, good morning, everyone. Good morning, and God bless you. Thank you for coming on this morning. This is Reverend Essie with New Birth Ministries. Hallelujah. God is good. Hallelujah. The sun is shining this morning. That is the S-O-N, because sometimes the S-U-N lets us down. Amen. Amen. God is good. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I'm glad to see all of you on today. For those that are on now, God bless you in Jesus' name. And for those of you who come later, either uh, my blog or Facebook or YouTube or whatever, uh, Twitter, God bless you and your household as well. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm going to be speaking today on the topic man or mammon. Amen. I'll be speaking on man or mammon. Hallelujah, hallelujah, God is good. Let's give him all the praise, give him all the glory. Let's not try to steal anything away from the Lord. Hallelujah, because God gave his best. He gave Jesus, amen. Hallelujah, so we should give God our best. Heavenly Father, Bless each and every person that is coming on right now to listen to this word. Today, Holy Spirit, use me to deliver this word. Teach us something that we did not know. Let us know that you are in these words that I'm about to speak today. If I'm speaking without you, Holy Spirit, then it's dead words. Hallelujah, sepulcher. Hallelujah, whitewashed sepulcher. So, Holy Spirit, use me and teach us what God would have us to know, cause people's hearts to be drawn to Jesus Christ. The world is really uh, messing up, Lord, and we see it every day, and we pray for your guidance. We pray for your comfort and your help in these situations that we're going through, and mankind needs to know about Jesus. The reason that I do what I do is so that people won't die and go to hell, but they'll learn about the salvation there is in Christ Jesus, Yeshua HaMashiach. Amen. Lord God, we thank you for all that you've done for us, as I like to say, from A to Z. Hallelujah. We can't find one certain word. Thank you is not enough. We thank you for everything you've done for us. Uh, bless each household that is represented here today. Hallelujah. Bless their, their health, their finances, their minds, their souls, their bodies, and their spirits, Lord God. In Jesus' name, the devil keeps trying to make us feel like the, the blood of Jesus doesn't work. The name of Jesus doesn't work. And just like your word says, the devil is a liar. The devil is a liar, and we refuse to listen to him because we have personal testimonies that we could tell if we wanted to that would prove that the name and the blood of Jesus works. There's nothing greater than the blood and the name of Jesus. And I cover this situation today. I cover this gathering today, this meeting today with the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. Anything evil, I bind in Jesus' name and send it to dry places, never to return to us ever again. Hallelujah. I cover each and every household with the sound of my voice, with the blood of Jesus for peace, prosperity, abundance, good health, wealth, power. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And amen, amen, amen. As I like to say, everybody, bring your, grab your pens and pencils and writing utensils to see what the Lord is saying to you today. Amen. Because when, when someone speaks, there's always something in it. For you. Amen. Hallelujah. God's not going to overlook you. Amen. He has something he wants you to know. Amen. Hallelujah. Man or mammon, and I'll be taking it from Jeremiah chapter 17. Turn your swords to Jeremiah chapter 17. Amen. If you want to write it down. And I'll be going mainly from verses 5 to 17. Amen. Now, the book of Jeremiah... Well, we know Jeremiah, as you might have heard yourself, Jeremiah is called the weeping prophet. Jeremiah cried. Amen. So when you see a prophet cry, don't make fun of them because Jeremiah, one of the greatest prophets in the world, was a, he cried. 
the weeping prophet, they called him. He had a heart for people. And anytime you have a heart for people, you are going to cry. Jesus, one of the shortest uh, uh, scriptures in the Bible is two words, Jesus wept. Amen. Jesus cried. Jesus wept. Now, this doesn't mean we have to cry all the time because there are some people who use crying as a, as a source of manipulation. Amen. Uh, you know, one cannot preach righteousness unless he first loves God loves. Amen. It does not mean to put up with their shenanigans or anything, right, or accept their wicked ways but to love their souls, which are crying out for help. No matter how a person is living, no matter what a person is doing, inside their soul is crying out for help. You see it all the time. You see it on TV about the entertainment uh, field, people who are in, in entertainment. And, and there are some young people who've gotten into entertainment, and they thought it was one thing and found out it was another thing, and they were raised in Christian households, and now you see them on TV and on YouTube and everything, or TikTok, whatever they have out there, and they're crying now because the things that they are in, the things that they are learning now goes against what they were taught in their households, and the next thing you know, they become a mess, and they're on the news for doing something that is out of hand, something that they would not normally do. Why? Because their souls are crying out, for help, and they know God loves them. Now, Jeremiah was a peace-loving man whose role was to prophesy, believe it or not, doom and gloom, doom and destruction, so to, so to speak. His name actually is a synonym for woe. Amen. Well, so usually when um, prophets come around, you know, they're not going to prophesy to you houses and land and cars all the time, okay? They are going to tell you the truth of something that God wants you to know. A prophet is going to let you know what to clean up. A prophet is going to let you know what to clear up, and they're going to tell you how to do it. Amen? This book reminds us that God doesn't have any, uh, we'll say, defective seeds. You are not defective, my friend. If you're looking for God, if you are a Christian, you've already received Jesus Christ as your Savior, you are not a defective seed. He doesn't have any defective seed that we can't, uh, we, we won't stay in our own pitiful situations. And God delivers us even before our problems arise. When you're going through something and, and you feel like everything everything's dark, you have a dark cloud over you, as they like to say, I can't stand that term. But when you feel like that, when you feel like everything's turning against you, know this, God saw it before it happened. God loves you. He's going to defend you, and it will change. Weeping may endure for a night, amen, but joy comes in the morning. God wants you to have joy. He wants you to enjoy, enjoy your life. Be in joy, amen. Hallelujah. So let's start with verse 5. Um, Jeremiah seventeen five, and it says, Thus saith the Lord, cursed be the man that trusts in man, who makes flesh his arm, and whose heart departs from the Lord. No. never. Tr don't put your trust in man before you trust God. Always trust God first. And sometimes it's hard because we have to kill our flesh. We have to beat the us down inside of us, amen, and allow God to reign. If you want to be successful, you have to allow God to reign. Trust God. Trusting in man does nothing but bring on curses to you and misery to you and your household. Man lies. The Bible says that God is not a man that he should lie. And if you want to write this down in your notes, write down Numbers 23:19. Amen. In man brings on lack. As we see going on here in the world today, there's lack of funding due to trust of man. There's lack of good health due to trust of man. All you see on TV today is commercials about new pills they came up with with weird names, and then you hear the end of it, and they say, well, this can happen to you, that can happen to you, that can happen to you. Well, why would you take it if you're going to get sick? They, mm, I won't go that deep, but be careful of the commercial. Most of the things that you see on TV, don't buy it. Don't get it. Don't trust it. 
You're trusting in man because most of the pharmaceuticals that you see on TV comes from the word pharma. And when you look up the word pharma in Greek and Hebrew, it is mainly witchcraft. That's why they call it big pharma. A lot of that stuff you see is witchcraft. Ask God first, and God will lead you to what he wants you to have. Amen? Especially when it comes for healing. To be, every single day you wake up, you could go through healing, amen, because of the blood of Jesus, Jesus Christ. There's lack of compassion because of man. Do you notice? I have noticed. Have you noticed that there is lack of compassion anymore? And that's why we see so many of those commercials that are, that are like begging, almost begging people, and they show sick dogs or little sick kids with flies on them because they're trying to stir up compassion again. But a lot of them are stirring up your compassion to get your money. Amen? There's lack of love because of man. Look at the things now that the devil is introducing in the world, trying to call it love. And it is not love. It is an abomination. The things that man has created or is trying to introduce to God's people is not of God. They are sinful. It is a sin. Amen. It is not true love. Jesus is true love. God is true love. Amen. Like the song says by Lionel Richie, Jesus is love. All this alphabetical stuff that you see today is not true love, and you can tell because they press themselves on people. They make you want to vomit on what they're doing. I love you in Christ Jesus, but I'm not accepting your sin. I'm not going to accept that. I will talk to you about Jesus Christ. Persecution or not, it's not real love. There's lack of common sense because of man today. People act like they have absolutely no sense anymore. People just follow. Uh, they follow around the wrong teachers, the false teachers in every situation of life, every compartment of life, and though they have a ring in their nose and they have their thumb and someone has a thumb and a ring and they're just pulling them right along and they're going right along with it. Amen. Amen. False trusts. There's false trusts today. Watch who you trust. You know, even I get on YouTube a lot. I have a YouTube channel, and I'm on YouTube. And I, there's a lot of things on YouTube nowadays. There used to be a time you can get on there and learn how to do something, gardening or cooking or just different things. And nowadays, there's so many false videos on YouTube. You have to be careful. And for all of you who listen to uh, the Word, Okay, you listen to preachers, prophets, whatever you want to listen to on YouTube. All of that stuff is not of God. And if you're not careful, they can take you down a wrong path. And the next thing you know, you're shaking like a snake and barking like a dog because you fell for fall. You trusted a false prophet, someone who just gets on and sounds like they're preaching. And it's really demons using them. There used to be a time that we could trust one another on a handshake. Some of you older people listening to this, you remember that people, you could trust one another on a hand. You could buy a house on a handshake. Not anymore. Amen. What that one song say, smiling faces sometimes, pretend to be your friend. Amen. Hallelujah. You got to be careful. Men forsake God and depart so easily from the Lord. Some have started out in the Lord. Some have started out in the Holy Spirit with the Holy Spirit using them. And then there are some who have turned around and turned their back on God. Let's go to verse 6. For he shall be like, what's it sound like when I read it? For he shall be like the uh, heath in the desert and shall not see when good cometh, but shall inhabit the parched places in the wilderness, in a sand, in a salt land, and not inhabited. Amen. This is for the people who trust in man. Amen. You will ha when you trust in man and not in God. Because I heard somebody say yesterday. Well, no, I saw it. I saw somebody posted yesterday on something I was looking on, and they said, um, "Well, you can't see him. I, I don't understand how people trust in something they cannot see. That's the problem. You have to have faith in God. Amen. 
And when you trust in man because you can see man, but you don't trust in God because you can't see God, you're bringing a curse on yourself. Amen? You will, have, you will suffer spiritual loss, spiritual drought. And you know what a heath is? Mentions a heath in the desert. It is uncultivated land. Wild, growing wild, everything, nothing is in order. You know what they say, the Indians even make gardens with the three sister system. They, there's three different uh, plants you can plant together to help each other and break up the soil and everything for you. There's no system in uncultivated land. It's just everybody, that's what we're like now here down here on earth. It, the earth nowadays is like uncultivated land. It's every man for him, every man for himself. And God does, God does not like disorder. God likes things decent and in order. Peace, uncultivated land, coarse grasses. You can't even lay down on them and enjoy the sunshine with a glass of tea in your hand. They're coarse grasses. They will scratch you. You'll end up getting sick probably, itching or whatever. You can't enjoy it. Heath, a dwarf shrub with small leathery leaves and small pink or purple bell-shaped flowers, much like we see on some of these uh, old cowboy movies on TV, <laughs> like, like, the, like the deserts that Clint Eastwood used to ride through. Remember, you would hear, <whistles> and you would see Clint Eastwood coming through <laughs> on a horse, and there's all kind of heat blowing around on the land, amen, dry, barren land, dry places. Who do we know? When you speak of the two words, dry places, what comes to your mind? Only devils are to walk through dry places. Gut devils. Heath, amen. People who trust in man end up parched in wilderness, a dry wilderness, amen. And when, write down Matthew twelve forty three. And Luke eleven twenty four, they both. In fact, let me go to one. Hold on. Turn to Matthew. What I say, um, twelve forty three. Here we go. Matthew, watch this. And both of them say the same thing. Matthew twelve forty three and Luke eleven twenty four, and it says, uh, wait, "Okay, I'll start with I'll start with forty two. The queen of the south shall rise up in the judgment with this generation and shall condemn it, for she came from the uttermost parts of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon, and behold, a greater than Solomon is here. Then 43 says, when the unclean spirit is gone out of a man, he walketh through what? He, he walketh through dry places, seeking rest and finding none. And that is where you end up when you trust in, in mammon and not, when you trust in God, and you, when you trust in man and not God. Amen. You end up in dry places. Some people want to know why their life is so dry. Some people want to, why, want to know why things just start popping and happening for them because they're trusting in man and they're not trusting in God. What do you think is going to happen to you? What did you, put it this way, what did you expect? Amen. What did you expect expect to happen to you? Trusting in man. Man is no good. Man can't even, and, and so many men don't even want to accept Jesus Christ and have their soul saved. If they're not concerned about their soul, why would they be concerned about you? Amen. Verse 7. Jeremiah seventeen seven And it says, blessed is the man that trusts in the Lord and whose hope the Lord is. Amen. Verse 7 is, is telling us, blessed are they who hope in God and trust in God. Amen. Trust in God, and then God will show you. He'll lead you to people that you can listen to. He'll lead you to people that you can trust. Amen. We only trust in the people that God leads us to, not ones that we go to ourselves. Amen. Now, what is hope? You have, you have hope in God, it says. It is a feeling of expectation for a desired thing to happen. And that's exactly what you, don't you want expect, I want expectation. Don't you want expectation? Amen. Hallelujah. And that's what would happen. You have the feeling of expectation for a desired thing 
to happen, what you desire, what you've been praying for. You've been praying for your son. You've been praying for your daughter. You've been praying for your church. You've been praying for your job. You've been praying for your neighborhood. Amen. Hallelujah. You're praying for the country. You got to give it to God. Trust God first. Amen. Verse 8. For he shall be as a tree planted by the rivers, but planted by the waters. What's that remind you of? Almost said it. Amen. <laughs> and that spreadeth out her roots by the river and shall not see when the heat comes. But her leaf shall be green. Your leaf shall be green when you trust in God and shall not be careful in the year of drought. When drought comes, you'll have nothing to worry about. Neither shall cease from yielding fruit. Amen. There is security in the Lord. You want to be secure. Everybody's talking about security. You want to be secure? There's security in the Lord, not in man. You know, a lot of people living on social social security and different um, money that they get from the the government is not your God. The government is not our God. Do you know, and, and the click of a finger, the blinking of an eye, you can wake up in the morning and they shut down all the programs and you have absolutely nothing. And if you're not a gardener, you can't even uh, eat or, or sell it so that you'll be able to, to eat or take care of your business. Amen? There's security in Jesus Christ. There are so many people out there living wild lives, amen, and they think they don't need Jesus, and they're just doing their own thing, and they're bumping their heads up against the wall, and they're bleeding, and they're not even paying attention to the blood. Some people are so blind, they can't even see or smell their own blood. There's security in God. You will have an unfaded life. You'll have spiritual fruit with Jesus Christ. I know that people listen to the word being preached. They listen to it over and over, and they hear the same thing. It seems like you're hearing the same thing, the same thing. Well, you're going to continue to hear the same thing because we are preaching hope to you. We are pastors and ministers are preaching new life, okay, to you. Amen. When life brings heat, when life brings the heat on, bring it on. Amen. When the life brings the heat. It's not even going to phase you. <clears throat> How many times have you been through things and you thought, oh, oh it's over. This is too much for me. to. I can't, I can't bear this. I can't take this. And then you woke up the next morning. It's gone. God handled it for you. Amen. It's not even going to, troubles aren't even going to phase you. Troubles will come. But though also, they should change that sentence too. Put a comma on it and say, but troubles will go in Christ Jesus. Amen. You'll have all green leaves. There's not going to be any yellowing, and there's not even going to be any signs of drought or danger. When you trust in God, you have the peace that passes all understanding, and people aren't even going to see signs that you're nervous. They're not even going to see signs because you're not. They're not going to see any signs that you have trouble because you don't. You give them to God and go to sleep. You're not even going to have the signs of drought or danger. <clears throat> That's why a lot of times people see Christians, they say, how are you doing? They say, oh, God is good. I'm doing good. God is good. Well, because you're not, you don't want to let people know that you have signs going on in your life of drought or danger because you know God's going to take care of it. Just as Psalms 23 says, the Lord only is your shepherd, and with him you will not want. Amen. Hallelujah. Verse 9. Verse 9 says, the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? Amen. People's hearts. Now, if the Bible says in the end times, men's hearts shall fail them for fear, if the heart is that weak and they allow fear in, how are they going to help you? How can I help you if I'm fearful? This is why, I hate to say this, but this is why maybe uh, a lot of you have listened to preachers or, or pastors or teachers or prophets or whatever, and they seem a little cocky, it's not that we're trying to act cocky. It's just that we're letting the devil know that we are no joke. We've been through this. We're not going to dance with you again, and we're going to help out as many people as we can. No, you cannot have that woman. No, you cannot have that man, and you're not taking their children from them. God has a circle of fire round about them. They belong to the Lord. They are not yours. 
This is why we talk the way we talk, because wicked people are out there. Sin is out there. We are born with a sin nature. That's why Jesus didn't have his mother or his father's blood. Amen. Hallelujah. We are born with sin nature. There are deceitful hearts out there. We, when we speak, we are talking to the demons out there that are everywhere that you can't see, that are trying to crawl up people's walls, crawl into people's uh, thought system, crawl into their bodies and, and, and affect their health, crawl into their families, hallelujah, mess up their land, mess up their vehicles, mess up everything they can because they want the de- deception Deception wants you to lose faith in God and question God. When Eve was in, when Eve was in, in the garden and, and the, the, uh, the uh, snake came up to her, right, and, and it was talking to her, and she said, we can't eat that because if we eat that, we may die. We could die. Is that what God said? Deception, no. She, she was being deceived. And God said, you will die. You shall die. He didn't say you might. So, you know, God wants us to have a close personal relationship with him because we'll know what he said and we'll know what he meant by it. Amen. Deception. Deceitful hearts. Amen. It's all around the world today. It's in leadership. It's in churches. It's everywhere. Deception is everywhere. Verse 10. I, the Lord, search the heart. I try the rain, even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doings. Amen. Now, be, doing works is not, is not a good thing, actually, to think that God's going to accept your works because God, God's going to love me more because I do a lot of works. Now, that's not what it's about. God watches your works. He watches what you do for the kingdom. Amen. God searches our hearts. It says God will test our God will test your heart. You wonder why sometimes you go through the things you go through in life because God could be testing your heart. Where's your heart? Is your heart with God? Even as far as my ministry is concerned, I tell, I tell the Lord all the time. I said, Lord, if you're not in it, I don't want to do it. I don't want to do this ministry on my own. If you're not in it, cancel me out. Amen. I don't want to do it. Where's your heart? He searches our hearts as Jesus did when he discerned what the Pharisees were thinking about him. Do you remember that? Jesus knows. He, the Pharisees were thinking. Jesus could actually tell you what you're thinking about. Your thoughts come from your heart. If you have evil thoughts all the time, you have an evil heart. God rewards us according to our ways. Now, that doesn't mean being nice is going to get you into heaven. Amen. You have to be godly and righteous. Hallelujah. You get what you give. Amen. So to speak, you get what you give. He tests our inner MOs. God will test your mode of operandi. What is your mode of operandi, I'm asking today? What are your innovations? Amen. Amen. Where's your mind? Where's your heart? Our motive operandi in order to give us what we deserve, what he wants to give us. Amen? Because actually, being sinful man, we deserve nothing. If it wasn't for Jesus, we wouldn't have anything. Verse 11. And, oh, now, this is, I want you to listen to this. Amen? Verse 11, it says, as the partridge sits on eggs, and hatches them not, <laughs> so he that gets riches, and not by right, unjust gains, shall leave them in the midst of his days, and at the end he shall be a fool. A man who receives unjust gain them at the end of his days, and is called a fool. How many times have you heard of people dying and, and they lost everything, everything that was so important to them. They couldn't love man. They couldn't share. They couldn't donate. They couldn't help out the, the uh, uh, kitchen, the 
in their city or town that helps homeless people, they just kept it all to themselves because they're above everybody. They're so much greater than everybody. And they died and left it, and everybody else gathered it and took it. They died a fool. Like Solomon, the Bible says Solomon died a fool. All that stuff Solomon had, he died a fool. Don't trust in man. And then watch this. Ready? I hope you're writing notes on this one. Okay, pray for me because I'm about to hit this. Notice it says it refers to partridges who hatch eggs that it did not lay. (laughs) Ooh, that's a thief. Partridges hatch eggs that it did not lay. In the beginning, verse 11, what does it say? It says, as the partridge sits on eggs and hatches them not. Now, partridge is going to sit on some eggs that doesn't even belong to them, but hatches them. And, you know, I think of the song, the song for Christmas and a partridge in a pear tree. Amen. Amen. That's kind of strange. That's, that's dishonesty. That's fleeting. Riches fleeting. Amen. Hallelujah. That is dishonesty. Somebody's taking somebody else's blessings that don't deserve it. Amen. And get this. Amen. Pear trees are allegedly symbols of Jesus, patience, careful observation, and good judgment. Sometimes just presented as a mother partridge who will die to protect his young. It's young. But in this case, the pears on a pear tree are not its young. They're pears. <laughs> Amen? Therefore, the partridge is either confused or it's a thief. Now, she sits on eggs. Now, I want you to think about this as far as your life is concerned and your belongings, which you have. This partridge will sit on your eggs, your nest egg, your gold nest, many speak about your finances, okay, that she did not hatch or produce, giving one a false sense of financial security, and do we have that today? Everybody is, is uh, experiencing a false sense of financial security, Make Jehovah Jireh your provider. Amen. So these partridges won't steal your nest egg. Oh, gracious. God is not God doesn't steal. What he gives you is permanent. Amen. Riches fleeting. A false sense of financial security. So, okay, on Christmas. When your true love gives you a partridge, you know what it says? My true love gave me a partridge. It may be some security, a type of false sense of security, amen, cannot give you what Jesus can. I don't care how fine he is, how pretty she is. I don't care how good she cooks or what kind of job he has. It is, don't let that be your total security, amen. Realize that God sent them, God first. If it wasn't for him, you wouldn't have them, amen. They may be some security, but they cannot give you what Jesus can. Jesus is true security. Heavenly riches, amen. And here's the tip. Watch this. By the way, Remember I was telling you, watch what you listen to, watch the videos that you watch. Be careful of the information that you're getting because in this situation and in every situation, actually, partridges are ground birds, amen, and they would not even nest in trees, amen. Verse 12. A gorgeous high throne from the beginning is the place of our sanctuary, We sit in heavenly places, y'all. We sit in heavenly places on glorious high thrones. We're there now with Jesus. I don't care how bad your life uh, looks, what's going on. You're sitting in heavenly places, is that word or not, with Jesus Christ. Amen. That's why the enemy picks on you because he, he wants to know. 
He wants to see if you know where you are. He wants to see if you treasure this earth more than you treasure being up there with Jesus, with the Savior. Amen. You're sitting on high, thr- glorious high thrones, sacred places. Folks, we, if you're saved by Jesus Christ, you have a holy sanctuary. You have a better place. So regardless of what you're going through here physically, emotionally, whatever you want to call it, you are actually doing better than what you think you're doing down here. Hallelujah. That's why we use the name of Jesus. That's why we use the blood of Jesus. They are keys. Hallelujah. They are keys to victory. Now, when you look up in strong concordance, in Hebrew, that is, uh, maram, it's called M. A-R-O-M, that is altitude, elevated places, aloft, far, upward. See, up, you sit upward in high places. This earth is not our home. And this word occurs in the Bible 54 times in 52 verses. Amen. Does that tell you something about that word? Hallelujah. Verse 13. Verse 13 says, O Lord, the hope of Israel, all that forsake thee shall be ashamed, and they that depart from me shall be written in the earth, because they have forsaken the Lord, the fountain of living waters. Keep our faith in God. And sooner or later, the wicked who was against you will all be ashamed. You'll get to see it. I always say what? Psalm 92, 11. It's one of my favorite, one of my favorite uh, scriptures. You can see it happening today. As much as the alphabet people push themselves on people, they are being rejected. You could bet the farm on that. Companies who are trying to use their products to promote this evil agenda are getting publicly rejected and losing money and funding right and left because they didn't depend on God. There are companies, major companies, that believe in God and they even tithe. What's up with these companies that aren't even tithing, but they're allowing evil to creep into their companies? They're doing bad. They're falling down. You know, these odd new agendas are too pushy. Have you noticed that? They push themselves on people. You can tell that the end is coming soon because they're vomiting on us. They're vomiting on people. Do you vomit on people because you're a male? Do you vomit on people because you're a black female? Do you vomit on people because you're Italian or Greek? Do you, you don't do that to people, right? You just live your life and try to get along with people. You don't try to, just because you're Irish, do you try to make everybody else Irish? You know? Good God-fearing people don't want them to vomit. We don't want it. They don't. We don't want their vomit. Amen. I don't want it. Do you want it? Did you ever notice that more sinful people are nowadays in the world? The more they push themselves on people, they try to make you like. You know what it is? You ever see those movies about bullies? There's always a bully that picks on a little kid. Amen. And and they push them and they push them and they follow them home and they beat them up and give them black eyes. How, why do I want to be like you if you're giving me a black eye every day? Amen. Why would I want to be like you if you have no peace? I want to live in peace. I don't want to be like you. Why live in vomit and filth when you have already, folks, a higher elevation? What do they say? What does the Bible say? Oh, don't throw your pearls before swine. Do not. You have pearls right now in your crown. You have diamonds. You have jewels that you cannot see, but they're there. So why would you agree with evil and, and give evil a chance in your life? Okay, it's okay to love the people, but you don't have to join in with their ways. You're supposed to draw them to Jesus. They're not supposed to draw you to who Satan, whoever. You have a higher elevation. In verse 14 to 17, it says, Heal me, O Lord, that I shall be healed. Save me, and I shall be saved, for thou art my praise. Behold, they say unto me, Where is the word of the Lord? Let it come now, and it's coming, because I'm definitely going to give it for the rest of my life. Verse 16 says, As for me, I I have not hastened from being a pastor to follow thee, neither have I desired the woeful day. Thou knowest that which came out of my lips was right before you, before thee. Be not a terror unto me, thou art my hope in the day of evil. Amen. This speaks of healing. 
And notice he's talking about pastor. He said, I am a pastor. And he's going to continue to give the word of God to people, crying or not crying. He said, I can't stop. The Bible says the word of God is like fire shut up in my bones. And I say the same thing. It's like fire shut up in my bones. I tried to stop. I can't. The devil keeps telling me you're no good. Nobody wants to be bothered, blah, 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 blah. You don't look like this one. You don't speak like that one. You don't have this many people, blah, blah. He finds everything he can to try to deter me from speaking the word of God. And the more he does it, the more I speak. If people don't like me, hey, that's on them. They don't have to. I'm going to continue to give the word of God. Amen. Scoffers of our preaching will soon see the outcome. I'm telling you that. I promise you that. Jeremiah says that he did not run away from pastoring, and neither, folks, should we. Are you saved? Have you accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior? If you haven't, just say this. Jesus, forgive me of my sins. I accept you as my Savior. I believe you died on the cross and rose three days later. I believe that's the truth, and I thank you for it. Thank you, Jesus, and amen. Amen. You did that. Now go find a Bible-believing, hopefully tongue-talking church, tambourine playing, church that does everything that the old church, the churches of old did. Amen. They danced. They played tambourine, and and they, they did praise and worship. Praise the Lord. Taught you the word from the beginning to end. Amen. And God bless you. The Bible says that God throws your uh, sins uh, uh, as far as the east is from the west. They're gone. The slate is clean. You start all over right now. God bless you. That's beautiful. Hallelujah. Amen. So start all over righteously. Right. Amen. Righteously. Righteously. Live a righteous life. Put up with uh, just pray. When, when people tease you, you just keep praying. And ask God to strengthen you. You're allowed to ask God for anything. And if it's wrong, you just say no. He's not going to beat you. Amen. Just ask God to teach you and lead you. And that's awesome. And that's why we're here today. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hey, this is Reverend Esty, New Birth Ministries. I'm glad you came on. I am ready to sign off right now. May God bless you and keep you. Make his face to shine upon you. May God be gracious unto you. May God give you peace, love, joy, abundance. How good friends, good finances, good health, good wealth. Amen. Hallelujah. May God give you everything that he meant for you to have, and may your angels bring it directly to you and win every battle because you already won in Jesus' name. Reverend Nessie signing off. To God be the glory for the things he has done. God bless you, and I will see you next week at 10 a.m. EST.